Hey. Ernie. How's it going, buddy? Man, I'm back here. You're back. Can you believe it? I, I can believe it. I started running a little bit late just to make you kind of... Uh, you were making me a place, little bit nervous. Call place the extra better so that I wasn't yeah. going to make it, man. Our guest today actually showed up before you did, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to have to dock that from your pay. Well, uh, he's driving a Chevy. That's the reason he made it here, man. I, was, yeah, I wasn't so worried about him making it. Well, you know. He had an asshole. Yeah. So. Yeah, 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 it's, it's got a few miles on it, but it's broken good. Yeah. Well, we got a new guest today on here. Very happy to have you, Dorenzo Brown. No Welcome worries. on the podcast. Mr. Dorenzo Brown. Glad you all invite me. Appreciate yeah. you inviting me. Yeah. Well, like we start every single podcast, uh, number one question is, what got you into this world of horrible financial decisions? I'm still trying to figure that out at the moment. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. I don't know. I started off with uh, four cylinders. I had a, a Dodge. Mopar. I had a SRT4 Neon, and um, some reason I got into that with some other buddies, uh, Scott and some more guys, and went to the drag strip one day. I had a I had a 98, 99 model Neon at one time, and they had Mustangs and stuff like that, and had the SI, little Civics. I believe I remember that car. What color was it, man? It was like a – Red, well, my, my four-door, my SRT4 was red, but I had a little Neon before that, and it was just an all-motor, automatic. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I remember the first time. It was out, fast. Uh, yeah. I, no, it was <laughs> not fast. So we actually went to the drag strip <clears throat> in Kinston. And um, for some reason, I wanted to race it. And this is my first time going down the drag strip and everything. So I had an automatic neon. So I'm, I seen everybody else revving the cars up and then taking off. I'm like, all right, I can, I'm going to do the same thing. So I get in my car. I get to the line. I rev it up in neutral. No lie. Boom, 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 boom. And throw it in drive. I said, shit, this wasn't, I don't think this is supposed to happen like this, but uh, that's where it started at. But yeah, it looked good. It, yeah, it didn't sound good, but it looked good. But uh, after that, the guys were like, man, let's get a faster car, faster car. So we ended up looking into uh, uh, SRT4, and I went down to Raleigh and picked one up, and it happened from there. Just transmissions after motor rebuilds and stuff from there. But, I mean, it's it's been a fun journey, and then after – racing uh <laughs> Sean. <laughs> so he used to have a GT500 back in the day. And um <laughs> we used to I used to race him with my Neon and then got on at the at the track at Kinston and we had <clears throat> we messed around and ran a few times but he could never beat me in his car. With him driving he couldn't beat me. Now he, had to, you? he had to hire a driver to uh beat me and that was um actually uh Taylor. I think Taylor. Yeah, Taylor Wiley. He Taylor was the Wiley. one who was driving. He was the one driving. That's the only time he could beat me in that car. So I give him hell all the time. Now, like, you had to buy another car to beat me in and stuff like that. But um, ever since then, like I said, I got my uh, Mustang now, and it's doing pretty good. So it's, it's it's been a little journey. but Yeah, we've learned a little bit about that journey. So how long ago was it that you had the uh, Dodge? Would you first start maybe <laughs> I think a couple years it, ago? I want to say I bought it probably in 2010, 12. Around about 2010 or 12 or so is when I first bought it and went from there. But other than that, it's it's been a little journey on that part. So, so. for the hundreds of listeners, this is 2024 listening now. So, you've been in this game about 12 years now? Yeah, I, I'll say that. I mean, it's been a – it's been an interesting journey, but I mean, it went from a slow journey to a little quicker one. I, I ain't fast. I said yet. game, but it's more of an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad yeah. addiction. It's, it's a – I've joked with people, a cocaine addiction would probably be cheaper. Yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah, it, it'd be cheaper. Yeah, you I didn't say it would be, be better. <laughs> you might won't be here right now. <laughs> <Yeah, okay. laughs> it will be cheaper for sure. Yeah, I didn't say it would be a better idea. I'm just saying it would be a cheaper idea. Right, right, right. You so, know. um, you spoke about Sean. How long? Where'd you meet them guys at? At the actual track? So at you? the track, uh, Sean and um. So they were laughing when you snatched it in the drive. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, <laughs> I don't know if he was around at that time. Then I don't know if he was actually racing much cars and stuff at the moment then, but uh. I met Sean at the drag strip, and then, uh, like I said, that's when I had my knee on, and he had his GT500 and stuff like that, and kind of ran into him a few times, and we became buddies from there, and uh, then after I started beating him a whole lot, <laughs> that's when he, you know, he came to my side then, yeah, but other than that, I've known him for a good little bit, and we've been boys ever since then, so. Well, we can I mean, t- the- talk a lot about times, but what kind of times do you think you were running with that knee on back in the day? Back then, I think the fastest I actually went with the car was like a 70690. In you know, eighth, I didn't really care about quarter because I went quarter one time at Kinston and um, you know, you front wheel drive cars, they, you know, you biggies in the front, skinnies mm-hmm. in the rear. Yeah, it's and a little it's, reverse. Right. So back then, I had a, I went quarter mile for some reason, and to me it was fast. It was like a lap and some second pass or whatever. But my rear wheels locked up on me, mm-hmm. and when they locked up, you ain't nothing. You ain't got I mean, nothing skinny. You know what I'm saying? And that ain't a much to actually slow it down. And I actually went into the dirt down at Kinston that day. And ever since then, I really didn't care about going quarter too much more. 
unless I went to a bigger track, which I just ran eighth a lot of times in. So I had some guys giving me crap last year because I'd throw the parachute at Kinston, and uh, I'm I'm like, I want most of the time I ran down there, it only gave me my eighth mile time. Right. One time they did give me my quarter mile time, and I'd accidentally run like a high eight right. going down there, and I was like, this is not a track to be running no, eight no, at. It's not. So I I threw that parachute every time because th- those trees come up quick. Quick. Real yeah, that, quick. that real turnoff quick. is. is yeah, you got to be on that it. turn off was real quick. Only, only time I made that first turn off was when I thought I'd busted the car and you came down to check Oh, on yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It yeah. was uh, somebody had forgotten to turn the air shifter on. Yep. Yeah. So, I do remember that. Yeah. I, we, thought, I thought I'd broke something. Do we want to talk about, we're not, we don't want to skip that far ahead about people busting their cars. I remember, <laughs> I remember this guy here. Um, we were down at Jacksonville, I think it was. I forgot the race. It was a 252 race. Yeah. And, uh, Man, I was talking to this one guy that was running him, and he said, "He said, yeah, I, I seen you when he blew, and I didn't know what what was going on." I said, "Well, I said, well, how did you see him?" He said, "Well, I can see his tail lights, and it was it was Thurman <laughs> Braxton." Yeah, so he just every time every time we're at the track, he does with uh, Thurman Braxton. He says, to, man, man, why don't you call me and tell me to back off since I was so far ahead of you? Yeah, I that, that yeah, I remember that. That was a bad experience that day. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that was got a little wicked coming across the finish line. The end. He but you won. Huh? But you won. Yeah, that's all I cared about. After I then blew my motor, I got out. I said, I won. No, that's all I cared about. I slid it, literally slid across the finish line yeah, in my hole. So, yeah. yeah, it wasn't a good event. I mm. told him, I said, from here on, if you see me out in front of you, give me a call. Just let me know so I can <laughs> get on out of it. Don't, don't let me run all the way through there. So I, 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 I think I remember watching you go by yeah, and, was, and just being like, because I was in between two RVs working right. on my car, and I just I hear something and I look up and I just see you go, yeah, by, like and you're you're looking at me going, oh like, yeah, it, it, it was sketchy. It's kind of yeah. like man, he's on a pass, man, he's up on that wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was yeah, it happened quick. Like, it was about 500 feet or so, and the motor let loose, threw yeah. a rod out, and like I said, I never saw him. I mean, we left together. And I did a little wheelie pedal, and I never saw him. Yeah, I never saw you, Thurman. Just to let you know, <laughs> but um. When I left out in front of them, um, I said it. It start feeling fast. They, they always say you go the fastest when it's about to let loose, and I felt mm-hmm. like it was on the pass at that time. And right about 500 feet or so, it threw a rod out, and all I can do was just steer the best I could. And I thought about taking it to the wall just because I never knew where he was at, and I didn't want to cross over into his lane. So I took it right to the wall, close as I could, and actually just rode on down the side of it, and then came on off. And I'm like, Sean called me on the big end. He's like, hey. What happened? It just this and that? And I said, nah, it threw a rod. <laughs> he said, you sure? I said, yeah, it's oil all on the passenger side. I knew it threw a rod. In. <laughs> well, um, you spoke about going from the four cylinders to this car. I mean, right. you've been on a journey with this car. I know he's been on a journey with his Fox body as well. Some of the guys I on your team. I don't have a Fox body. It's an S5. Well, excuse thing. me. Some of the must, Fox, Fox must bodies be, are ugly pieces of crap. <laughs> Mustangs. <laughs> and, you know, Hot takes that don't matter. There's a couple guys on your team. Uh, we think we're going to have Justin on a little later. He's part of your mm-hmm. part of your team. Hangs out with you guys. He's got one too. So, yeah. you, um, talk a little bit about. Um, I've watched the journey of this car a little bit. So I actually bought that car as a running V6 car. I had a blown head gasket, and um, so I, before that one, I actually bought a black one. And um, when I bought the black one, I went into and it was messing with all the suspension stuff. And then I realized there was a lot of rust upon the rear of it, and I didn't want to get into. It. So I was like, you know what? Let me find another one. So I found out I'm pretty cheap in uh, Virginia. Went down and picked it up. And like I said, it had some damage on the front end of it. But um, I was like, that's fine. I can tube the front end and go with it from there. Off. So, like I said, it was a running V6. So, we cut it all up and um, tubed the whole front. And Does she have a name? Uh, no Pressure. No Pressure. Yep. That's the name of her. And the only reason that name come from is uh, when we first got the car together, had no oil pressure. We yeah, started I up. I mean, it's a brand new build. Started up. It built the pressure. And then, like, 10 minutes in, it's dropping down. I'm talking about 10 or low. It's dropping when it gets hot. I'm like, what in the world? So we rebuilt the motor again, took it to the machine shop, checking things out. Hey, they say they can't see anything. I'm like, what? It's all brand new stuff in here. Come to find out it was a brand new set of lifters that was bad. Mm. It was a trash, a trash set of lifters that was just like, oh. So we put a new set of lifters in there. Boom, oil pressure come back. And so, I mean, for the first year, like first couple of months, it gave me, gave us hell. And I was like, a yeah. lot so, of shop time. So, yeah, a lot of it. So that that's where the no pressure come from on that part there. But like I say, got the car going and, um, I mean, I swapped some, the, the black car I had had an um, 8.8 rear end in it. So I put the 8.8 rear end in it. And it's just a stop block, you know, stop block junkyard motor. And that's about it. Man, I, I've, <laughs> I've seen, uh, I've seen this car do a lot of different things on the track. Mm-hmm. One time I seen the wheel actually finish a race. <laughs> 
and the car didn't finish. Yeah, so that was I was that. wondering if that if that ever counted in in racing. You know, <laughs> if part of your if both cars take off, and one of your car, one of the car, at least a part of one of the cars, almost like Ricky Bob, was that Talladega Nights or yeah, something. Yeah. If one of the cars actually make the full pass, even if it's just a wheel, I mean, does that does a, is that a win? That's that's a good question. Yeah, mine's <laughs> – that was actually the second. So that was the second time out with the car. So that Friday night, it was um, it was the throw the, the 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 start of the king of um, two five two at Kansas okay. and stuff. Then, so that Friday night, I did some couple test passes on the car and um, had a wastegate problem. So. Buddy Harry took the whole hot side home. He added another wastegate to it. Brought it back on that Saturday. Boom, did a shakedown. Everything seemed to be okay. <laughs> and then um, on the first round, I think, maybe first round or was it the second shakedown or something like that, I was running my buddy Jason. Shout out to BPF, by the way. Uh, running my J- buddy Jason. He was in the right lane. I was in the left lane. We took off. And when I took off, the car went into a bad, bad wheel shake. Mm. And I was like, oh, boy. And it happened so quick, I didn't know what happened, but I knew something happened. But when it just shook, 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 and then all of a sudden the back left wheel said bye-bye. And when it left the chat, it literally left the chat and it swung me around to the guardrail and everything. The reason so is because I had the wrong lug nuts on, which was my fault. But at the time, I'm younger, not really thinking about it. I had, I had the correct lug nuts for the car, but – I didn't put the right one, so I had some acorn ones on it when it should have had the shank lug nuts. Mm-hmm. And all it was, it just that wheel hop didn't help, and it just vibrated loose and sheared all the lug nuts off. So I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I won't do that again." So you can best believe every every time I go to the track now, I'm checking lug nuts, make sure they're tight. And they, even if they are tight, I'm, I, I know I got the right ones on them, but I'm checking to make sure they're all tight now. I mean, that's been a long part of our journey with with emotional damage. Is just Nut and bolt, nut yeah. and bolt, nut yeah. and bolt, you know. Yeah. And, like, especially if she goes out there and shakes the tire yeah. or, or something uh, violent happens, right. it's like bring her back, put her on jack stands, yeah. go through the car. Got to. Man. You it's, know. it's tough. I mean, we, to the point now, everybody's going faster, man. Safety is coming to be one of the, the main parts. I mean, we've seen a lot over the last few years for sure. So I make sure. I mean, I tell my guys, hey, look, did you check this? Did you check that? Let's, mm-hmm. let's make sure because we don't want to have that dumb moment happen again for something that small you know so yeah, yeah. i'd like to talk more continue talking more about your program and later on getting more into uh that last thing up there the, the prepping part but as far as on your car what are some of the things you have done or what motor you're running now so i got a it's a stop block five three um it's got some goodies inside of it nothing nothing crazy but i'm um, just a stop block five three stop block yep stop block. We, we highlight that on the <coughs> channel it's, it's just stop it's yeah. a stop block and then so it's mine <laughs> yeah, so coyotes are coming to be. Hey, they they coming to they coming up now. Yeah. You go back a couple of years ago, coyotes wasn't they was there, but the the knowledge and the, the power of them it was there as well. But people wasn't figuring out. Oh, you can really go a whole lot faster with them now. Yeah, because we, you, we spoke with Hauser uh, engine builders on a couple of weeks ago about all the R and D going into those motors. Yeah. I believe they're really going. I'm a Chevy guy, but. uh them, them Fords are really starting to be impressive. Yeah. And, and they're giving the five threes a run for their money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they come to be the – I ain't going to say the top of the food chain, but they, they they working their way up there, you know what I'm saying? And another thing about Coyotes, if you look at prices-wise, and that's a re- another reason why a lot of people in LS is four point. You get an LS back then, junkyard motor, three to $500. You go try to get a Coyote, you're going to spend, just say, $2,000. That's the difference. So, mm-hmm. you know, I can spend – Two thousand dollars in this three to five hundred dollar motor run just as good as that five that two thousand dollar motor. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was one thing on it. But now on my car, I mean, like I said, it's a stock block five three. It's aluminum block motor. Um, it's a four hundred behind it. And it's turbo. I mean, nothing crazy. I mean, it's it's a basic setup. You know what I'm saying? Love me a turbo four hundred. I love those things. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. Yeah, I want to go glide. My guys, they all want me to go glide. I think I'm the only one with a four hundred. Well. Yeah, I might be the only one with a 400. I mean, and right you can now. always take a 400 and make it a two-speed <coughs> 400, you know, which makes it even tougher than a glide. Yeah. But. You know, which it just depends on your transmission builder and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's uh, for me, because I like doing a lot of quarter-mile stuff. You know, eighth, you miles, eighth yeah. miles okay. I love quarter-mile. Yeah, for you, you yeah, I, I can understand the 400 on that part. Although the last quarter-mile race I saw you at, un- you uh, you unfortunately pulled a bear. Out at a streetcar takeover yeah, that, in that, Charlotte. Yeah, I probably. <laughs> yeah, well. Speaking yeah. of coyotes. Yeah. Guess yeah. who this guy ran? Yeah, and I had to run the, the quickest. Do we want to mention his name? 
Oh, he's come up in every episode so far, yeah. so I don't know why not. He ran Brett LaSala. Yeah, yeah he, he put <laughs> it in snot rocket. Snot rocket. Yeah, he put, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a snot coming out of my nose and out because I was crying like a little baby afterwards. But yeah, he put it to me that night. <laughs> yeah. That was, I mean, like I say, man, you can't, hey, I, I respect him. You know, That's one of those guys, though, that if, if you draw on first round and you were to put him on a trailer, you won the race. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, you wouldn't have to. You wouldn't right. have to win the whole race. I got nothing to lose. If you just beat Brett Lasala at this point, yeah. if for anyone mm-hmm. listening, if you actually line up beside Brett Lasala and you actually beat him, I mean, you just just act like you won the race that day. Because oh, yeah. I mean, dude's putting the Might he's well setting the bar. He's really sure. setting the bar. But I mean, it's good. You know, um, one thing I want to speak up with you, but he's actually setting something for people to look up to and something to mm-hmm. aspire to. Right. You know, I see that with yourself and all the things you're involved in, man. It's really been cool watching you on. Um, like I said, I have seen you. I remember when you used to come out with your neon, um, just grow in the sport, yeah, and I, just become more involved. I I enjoyed it for sure. Like I said, it just I mean, it was a it was a night and day difference from the four cylinder. I got to the point where another reason I went to V eight while is because um, I, you spend so much in a four cylinder to go mm-hmm. the starting time that I was with that. I, even what, I, yeah, there's some fast four cylinders out there. But look at the money they might got into. You know what I'm saying? It's so much more that you got to put into a four cylinder to even get to where you're at now. But if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. You like what you like mm-hmm. at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And plus, it, it's fun driving a five speed. It was fun doing that. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah, yeah. I just sit here and just hold on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? On, but, uh, uh, on X front wheel drive, which I guess is the top class right now, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, something like that. Do you know how many passes they get on a set of tires? What, 12? Three. They, and they're not cheap tires. They're like three hundred dollars yeah. a tire. Yeah, they put. In, it's, it's a lot they put into them cars, man. And I, it just got old for me at one point. Like I said, I just I had too much money tied into mine, which it wasn't the fastest. But that's where a lot of people know me from when I started. You know, I got my name mm-hmm. Turbo D from that car, from the guys in the street racing days and well, stuff like that. So. It's really all about having fun, being safe. But then you know, just be inspired to get out there and do it. Um, that's something we like to highlight on the channel. Um, what's one of the funniest things that you've ever done um, on the way to a track or one of the wildest things you've ever done in between rounds to make your car get to the next pass? Did you, did you rob somebody's battery, turbo? Uh, let's see. <coughs> uh, let's see, let's see. One of the craziest or wildest or on the way to the track. Well, let's put a – all right, we're going to speak on – this is just something that just happened. It's not that wild or crazy, but I look at how things can turn just that quick. Mm-hmm. So just past weekend, I went to the DMV race. Um, it was down out of banks or whatever. So I left home, not even five minutes from the house. I had to blow out on the trailer. Mm. I'm like, dang, you know, this is how I'm starting my day off to go racing. This is not good. So luckily I had a spare with me on the back of the truck, and I whipped in the speedway, and that spare was flat. So I pumped it up. Put air in it, swap it out, put it on. I was like, well, before I head down here, let me go buy another tire and wheel and everything. So I shot over to Leonard's in Greenville. Shot over there, and um, <laughs> I pulled up, and I went in, got me another wheel and tire, went to the register. And the guy, um, he was like, all right, what size is this? Is it five low, six? I said, it's a five low. So he was looking through the computer and checking everything out. He said, well, come on outside. He said, I said all right. He said, I'm head below it on the truck. I was like, okay. So I walk outside, and uh, he's like, Look, I can't find it in the system. He said, so it's yours. I'm going to let you have it today. I was like, I appreciate that because it went from my day is going to to, you know, boom. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, this might be a good day of racing. You know what I'm saying? So I took it as a plus in that way. You know, I was about to waste X amount of money on a wheel and tire at that time. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, shout out to Leonard's on that time. You know, I'm not trying to throw anybody on or anything like that. But just I just look at how – Things went from bad to good just that fast. So I'm like, okay, I didn't stop giving up there. Let's let's continue going. The day could only yeah, get better. Yeah, some people you know that went back home. Right. I mean, because you st- five miles from the house and boom, had a blowout to start your day off. Like when I literally every time I leave the house, I always check my tires. The tires look fine, and uh, I was like, okay, cool. But then it just it literally popped, and I was like, man, this is not how I want to start my race day off. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's nothing crazy, but you know, that's that's just something that it just. Yeah, when you still got like an hour and forty five minute right, drive, you know you're five minutes into it, you're like. <clears throat> That's, I didn't, yeah, but like I say, I was so we went on through the track that day. I only made two passes. It, it wasn't as good as it turned out. A lot of people was hoping, in a ways, but on the two passes, they was decent. So I stopped my luck. Right, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna make another pass. I don't need to make another pass. So I'm just stopping right here and let the day. It was a good day at the end of the day. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that may have happened. I can't think of now, but uh, I just look at it like that was something that was wild to me because it started off bad. To an hour later, it would turn out to be a lot better. So. 
So the the main reason I got to know you, and I think a lot of people get to know you, is you you help pretty much everybody at the start line. Right. Um, you know, you always did a good job getting emotional damage lined up straight. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, thank thank you for all your patience with my burnouts this hey, year. Yes. That she was fighting me yeah, you, you, for the line lock. Yeah, you was it's, a little tough. <laughs> yeah, it it did not. The line lock just did not want to hold, and so like by the time it finally would start to light the tires, right. it would just push, push through, through it. it. Yep. You know, so thank you for that. And, um, you know, I do have to say you probably were the best one at getting you. it in the right spot, right. you know, because I just don't have as much experience with it to, right. to see inside the car right. where I need to be. It's hard sometimes to do that. That's why – and that was another thing, man. Like, when I go to the track, you know, I help out at Kenson a lot. You know, when I started there, Mr. Bobby came up to me. He said, look, I appreciate your help, you know, this and that and that, you know. And I never went to the track to, you know, work. I went to – I want to see this man go down. I want to see that man go down. Or if something happened, I want to help out. You know, that's that's how I always been. You know, and and just if I go to any track, I mean, you, yeah, I promise you, if we go to any track and they, and they allow me to be up by the start yep. line, you are gonna see me go out there and help them. I mean, it just that's just how I am. You know what I'm saying? And I don't. It just it just came across me. I mean, it's always something. I just always want to make sure. I want to see everybody do a. a a PB, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. <laughs> talk about uh, Logan and the Lo boys. They yeah, always got the personal best. best. Yeah. But um, I always it, want to see. So I, I want to see you go good. I want to, mm -hmm. see, you know, what I'm saying, and that's, I want you to be safe at the same time. So I'm gonna check if you leaking, bro. Hey, stop. You know, yeah. it's, I don't want you to go down. Fix it. Come back if it's leaking again. Then okay, you're not, you know, we're not let, let you go. You know, so I was, uh, I was very touched by your confidence in me though when I uh, lined up for the Renegade Finals. And you put your camera on my car, oh, yeah. and I, I, I was, I was like, "Oh man, that's some pressure." And yeah. then, of course, she snapped an axle yeah, like I mean, right on the start line. Yeah, it's like, all good. I mean, it's racing. I mean, yeah. you never know what might happen when you get out there. But like I said, yeah, I mean, I help out everybody, man. It's not one person that I'm looking at like, no, nah, I'm not gonna help you. I mean, if you, I see you out there need help lining up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. It's just in me. That's what mm -hmm. I do. Well, it's kind of a, you know, we get to the same tracks, run some of the same events. We end up with a family of racers. I know myself. I hardly ever go hungry at a track. If I'm out there filming or just doing like you, um, and it is pretty cool to see you out there helping on the track. And this, well, a lot of guys, I think that the racers actually appreciate it because you're a racer. You're not going to let them go down with their car because, right. I mean, their car, you might not have the money in their car, right. but I you know what it costs to fix it. For sure. For so sure. if you could see something wrong, you're not you're not going to say, no, nah, they might can make a pass, and then we'll get it afterwards. Like, no, we're just going gonna to hold this up. Yeah. You're not going to send these guys down like this. Right. I mean, it's it's great to have another opinion out there, um, and I've seen that a lot in racing. Well, I, don't, I don't think I actually told you uh, when when I blew the motor in my car at Rockingham. First person to get to me was was Dorenzo. You know, make sure I was okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was scary. Yeah, it was. We seen that happen. Yeah. yeah, it was a bad weekend for our racing program that weekend as well. After you blew your motor, Buddy Tyler, yeah, it wasn't good for him in the finals. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We might not never have that guy on the podcast. <laughs> he's, he's like impossible to, to get a hold of. Yeah, I mean, he's you know he's a busy man, so you never know. <laughs> yeah, never know. Oh man. But I was just thinking about something you asked about. You know, a while like mm -hmm. on the way to the track, from the track, whatever, whatever. So we went to Texas. Um, oh yeah, I've seen two, pictures of it. About two years ago, I think. Yeah, it was in Texas. Went down there. That was a that was a haul. I mean, we took a car to race down there. <clears throat> well, on the way back, I will say that's probably one of the wildest trips that we ever had. We had not one blowout, not two blowouts. We had three blowouts on the way back from Texas, and um, that was rough. I mean, luckily, I mean we get, and it's crazy because nothing that we we like. How do we make it all the way here? No problem. And then on the way back. You know, we having this, and we had more weight on the truck on the way down there. Once we got to Dallas, we went to um, the VP and bought some um, fuel, bought some ethanol and stuff like that. So it was like, dang, you know, it just the weight hold distribution kind of like what's different. Well, come to find out, we think I think we had the car a little further forward, and then we had the weights out the back of the car, in front of the car, and stuff like that as well. But um, like we got our first blew out, boom, blew it out, and then we had to pull over and change it. We, we took two spares with us. That's what. That's the crazy part. We only took two spares with us. And we had three blowouts. So the first one, boom, we put it on. We was like, okay, maybe it was just a tire. So then a couple hours more down the road, we had another blowout. Well, when we got to that gas station, we had passed a guy on the road pulling a car trailer. And he pulled up a little later on behind us while we was changing the car, um, changing the tire and stuff. He's like, is everything good? I was like, yeah, everything is good. And he was like, but by chance, you going to have a spare tire on you with He said, look, man, I got one I just bought. And I was like, 
what you want for? I'll give you $200 for it right now. He said, ah, he said I might need it now. I got a good little trip. Like, look, I understand you might need it, but I think we might need a little more right now. Fun. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> we just had two, and like, we ain't, our luck ain't looking good right now. He said, I said, look, we'll give you $200 right now. So we gave him $200. He gave it to us. No lie. Three hours or so, I don't know. Down the road, boom. It blew out our last spray that we just put on. But we got his left, so we was like, okay, when we do this here, we're going to move the car. Let's let's change the whole where the car sitting in the trailer. Let's pull it a little further back because every tire that we was popping was the front two tires or whatever. So we was like, let's pull the car back a little bit, get a little weight off the nose of the trailer and stuff like that. And we put his on. We moved the car back. And luckily we made it from, I think we was in, I want to say maybe Louisiana somewhere. I, I don't, I'm not sure, but we made it from there all the way back home on that. So thank that guy, wherever we met you at that time, thank you for that spare tire because, uh, yeah, we probably have been stuck to the next morning to try to find a new tire and stuff like that. Sure. So that was, that was, that was a, yeah, that weekend was, <laughs> that was a long ride back. Well, that's sure. Was that, was that TX2K? No, we actually had? went for a no prep race down in, um, in Texas in okay. Eagle Pass, Texas. We had some guys that, um, like they still go down there now and race too. But, um, there's a guy that when our buddy Matt, um, he's a no prepper mm-hmm. and, um, he linked up with some guys in Texas and like I said, we took his car down there. It's called uncle lumpy. Took his car down there. <laughs> yeah. Took yeah. his car down there and uh, we actually did okay. And that's actually when we um um RP Cali Nate. We actually that's my first time meeting Cali Nate. Mm-hmm. Um we actually ran him second round. We tried to call him out the first round, but he didn't want to do the call out, which I understand. New surface to everybody, don't know this car. I'm not gonna he's not gonna set the call out. So second round we end up <laughs> did some fishy stuff to get him second round and yeah, we should have got him. We should have done the fishy stuff to get a first round because mm-hmm. we could have fell into a second, like a first round losers bracket or whatever. But yeah, we pulled him second round, and uh, it is what it is. But we had to we had to run him twice. The first one was too close to call, and then um, the second one he put that thing on us the second round. So. Yeah, he was like, I'm I'm done with these guys. <laughs> yeah, he went ahead you, and did it. <laughs> speaking about no prep, man, I've I've actually seen you uh, run some no prep and take out a, a big hitter. Yeah, so uh, this past year, down at Dig or Die. And what car are you running? You, so this is your radio car. So that's my radio car, and um, and it's probably always going to be my radio car, unless for some reason I get a wow up my button. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually drove my buddy Sean's car, Wild Hair. And um, I wasn't – that weekend it was Dig or Die down at Rockingham. I was not expecting to run. I was going to, you know, help out like I always do. You know what I'm saying? It was a team thing. Like, that's what I was going to do. And um, I was like two, three miles from the track, and he was like, hey, Look, we just made some changes on the car. I've been drinking a little bit. I don't want to drive the car. You think you can shake the car down tonight in on a little spot? And I said, sure. I I don't care. I do it. So I got there and I shook the car down. And first time ever actually that caliper of car in the street. And I was like, okay, I do it. So got out there, made a decent pass. And he was like, look, the car worked with you in it. You want to drive the car tomorrow? I was like, hell yeah, I drive. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I do it. Like- yeah, yeah. I'll be a hired driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. So, so, um, so the next day we got in, we talked about everything. It's like, look, I think since the car worked with you in it, let's keep you in it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, that's cool with me. So, um, so that's what I did. So, and actually, first round down, um, Dig or Die. I can't remember his name right now. Mike. Mike Gunter. Gunner. That's right. I don't know how I can't remember that name. I took a killer out at the time, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, I actually had him. And I was like, man, I'm like. That's that's kind of heavy. I mean, because he won it, what two yeah, maybe yeah, two years or so prior. Maybe. Yeah, he's won a couple. I'm still I'm still trying to talk this guy into coming down there and hanging out with us. It's, a, it's different, man. It's, it's it's a different family. It but is it's still it's still just as cool. I'm, I might come out and and watch. It's my car is not the kind that needs to be on a no man, prep come, surface. I tried to I tried to some prep surface, didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's different. It's a different world. I mean, I might have been taken out by your buddy actually. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. maybe you could help under, help us understand this a little bit. I mean, it's like you said, the sun prep that doesn't give no prep any justice yeah. because when you go from radio prep to a, a track that's prep for maybe like Mickey Thompson's, right, and then you go to a track that's bare rocks and cracks yeah. with Hoosiers, it's it's, it's 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 a difference, man. If I had a choice between cars I was building right now, honest to God, unless you're building a bracket car, either I'd be building one for that back of the track stuff. Or or straight radio, yeah. And depending on what your budget is, a lot of times you're gonna be building it for back. And, and track. that's the thing about going no prep. No prep, you don't need X amount of horsepower. You just got to have the right combination. Suspension. Of, that's that's the main thing, and and that, that's the main thing right now. To start no prep now, to go build a no prep car now, you're behind. You got to have a lot of data because these guys got X amount of numbers of passes on this no prep, and they got a team that all the cars are basically set up just alike. And they okay, boom. We got this track. The surface look like this. 
boom, we can put this in there. And they already got it. If I go out there right now in my car, swap it over to no prep, I'm probably going to be behind in a way. You know what I'm saying? But, yes, we – now, I will say I got a team where we got a suspension guy. We got, you know, a computer guy. We I got a lot of guys that's with us that – that knows it. So we can go out there and maybe share the with a little bit. Sharing tunes. We're well, yes. already doing that in the radio world now. Yeah, but but with the radio world, yeah, you can share the tune, but at the same time, if you ain't got, you know, you got to have it to go out there. I mean, you got some guys that's running pretty quick. Even like if you go out in the big class now and you got a aftermarket block, you're not going to run with the limited guys. You, I mean, if I got, all right, if my car, the, caliber, the way my car sit right now, if I had an aftermarket block in there, it's no need for me to go run with. Tyson and Coleman and, and and Bunch and all those guys because I can't run with them. You know what I'm saying? My car isn't even set up to even run with them. So that's why you kind of got to stay in your lane when you go to racing like that. And and with my class now, the stop block, the small block guys, like the small block nitrous and stop block turbos, they're all tit for tat in, in around here. Now, it is some stop block turbo guys that's running – bottom fours but that's the record a uh, 420 or so is a mm-hmm. is a stop block record for you know what i'm saying but those guys are testing during the middle of the week too. you know what i'm saying no guys I mean, they, but they got their chassis is probably you know a, a crazy chassis too that's a, a basic built, a built chassis right you know what i'm saying that's just a basic build there you know what i'm saying so a lot of the guys you know i'm not knocking no small block guys i mean these small block cars run good you know what i'm saying but we get to the point now and and we're gonna talk about it right now like it's races that's going on people or crying, oh, we don't want the stop block guys to run with the small block. Well, shit, these small block guys are running faster than some of the stop block guys right now. You know what I'm saying? So, what's the point? And, oh, what's the turbo? Well, you <clears> – <throat> all right. I understand nitrous – let's let's rephrase it. I understand turbo got mile power. Everybody think turbo mile power, mile power. But look at let's look at this. ET is ET. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you got. If you run a 5.0 – with a nitrous car and I run a 5 with a turbo car, that's the same thing. It's just who going to get there first. So it's it's, it's going to be at the tree. Your mile per hour, yes, I might got 10 more mile per hour on you, but shit, I still ran a 5-0. What's, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's really not that much difference in, in the way. You know what I'm saying? But everybody just scared of turbo cars. Why? I don't know. It's plenty of fast nitrous cars out here. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fast nitrous cars yeah. out here. But I think what it is more of the guys around this way are – not used to running turbo cars, or they look at oh well, you know these turbo cars run this amount. Well, fast. until they until they actually line up and beat one uh, time or two, and they're like, well, you know, I thought they were fast, but right. I mean, right. if you got more kit, you got a better tune, or the weather plays a huge part. How is this getting right now in the summertime? Yeah, that's an advantage for the nitrous a cars because the turbos. Well, a lot of it also is coming down to the turbo guys are really taking advantage of data. Yeah. Computer, you know, the computer is doing a lot of the work yeah. for yeah. you. Whereas a lot of the nitrous guys are still kind of stuck into carbureted. I'm gonna, I can put just a bigger jet in it, and it it will work. And it's like, it's like, yeah, it might. I was yeah. like, but a, a well set up car on a Holly Dominator or a Fuel Tech or whatever, you you can have the turbo doing exactly what you want. You can right. have traction control on it, and right. and I I see some differences there. I don't agree that the nitrous guys should get their own class. No, right? not me. Because I it's a, it's like. No, because then it's like, well, the nitrous guys need their own class, and then the pro charger guys need their own right. class, and the turbo guys need their own class, and then so now you're killing car counts. Yeah, now yep. you now you end up with 18 classes with two cars in each right. class, right? And, and it's and it's and and no one wants to show up. No, for that. and it's yeah. not about it. Nobody's gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I say, I mean, we look at Brock made a a, a a nice point the other day. Out of his last few races, all his races he had. It's Brock uh, Fairclaw, yeah, Brock, Brock Productions. Yep. So. <clears throat> Brock, we want you on the podcast. <laughs> so he has two races. He has one in um, what's this? In April, I think. Yeah, is that in April and one in September. I think that's right. Yep. So he has one every year. All right. The stop block guys, stop block turbo guys, and the small block nitro guys run together. Right. Mm-hmm. Brock made a, a nice example. Not one stop block turbo guy has won his event yet. So that tell you there. And it's, that's the thing. Like none of his guys, small block guys, are crying. But not, I'm not saying nobody's crying. A, don't don't take it the wrong way. I'm not saying those small block nitrous guys are crying, but they're not complaining about running stop block guys because they know they can compete with them. You know what I'm saying? I understand if you your car might not be to the caliber to run with some turbo guys. I understand that, but that's where I say you stay in your lane. If you can't run with the small, you might can't even run with the next small block nitrous guy. You ain't complaining about him, but you complain about another car that you might think is fast. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's just a lot. It's so much. Everybody now wanted for sure win. 
You go to the shootouts now, man. Nobody care. I don't care who's beside me. I don't got beat a lot of times by a lot of nitrous cars, you know, and the Copa Turbo cars as well. And another thing, I, I don't think I went to the next round in my car yet. I always go to the second round in somebody else's car when I'm driving. That's <laughs> I can't go to the second. Well, you did. might have to put someone else in your car yeah, for it. I'm going to drive other people's car to get uh, to the that, second Who's round. that girl that keeps pulling and needs to uh, <sighs> stop pulling her in yeah. first round? What? Oh, Jenny. Oh, oh Jenny. Jenny. Yeah, it's okay. Jenny, I'm – Miss Radford. Your day is coming, Jenny. Just – I, I was hoping I could see you Thursday night, but you're lucky to rain. Well, yeah, we can talk about that. But you're lucky we didn't run Thursday night. Yeah, Miss, yeah, me and Jenny done ran a few times. And uh, matter of fact, I called her down in Hereford, and um, I called her at Kenton this couple weeks ago. And uh, it seemed like I can't keep the wheels down when I run her. It's like I got to, got, to, I know I got to go with her. You know, so that's that's prime example. She's a small block nitrous car. I can't beat her. Killer. I She's can't beat her. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm trying. I can beat her. I'm going to beat her. But right now I can't get her. But my thing is, like, I she's she's tearing me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I respect her. Well, yeah, y'all, should, uh, y'all should come to Galat this Thursday because uh, I may have a little grudge race set up with somebody else. That's what's and, up. Uh, so that, that's the only thing. I can't – so we got a race this weekend coming up, the 252 race in, yep. in Jacksonville coming up this weekend. And also – since it rained out, can't see uh, fast fast. I think. Yeah, so when a weekend. Yeah, shit. That's, Mass think, traction's yeah. gonna be there, man. It's, I'm looking forward. It'll be my first. Uh, no, no, no. This will come out. Uh, this will come out uh, two days before. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, mass traction's gonna be there, man. It'll be my first time being there at a track where they're at. So it's gonna be a cool experience for me. Yeah, that's he, he. I give it to them. They they um. I went to Jacksonville with them. He came down a couple weeks ago, about a month or so ago, and um. Uh, he actually had the track. He had it on key. I mean, I don't. I don't know the difference that he may have done. I haven't been to Jacksonville in a minute before him, but I do know when he was there that day, the track was working. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to this weekend coming up and racing for well, sure. Well, it's a big difference, man. I mean, you guys run turbos. You ever run nitrous yourself? Never, never ran nitrous. Um, I have drove nitrous cars before, but um, I never actually had nitrous. When I was going to build that car, I actually was thinking about going nitrous. And another reason so is because I come from a, a grudge world, like a grudge world from the street and stuff like that. And a lot of my guys in all had nitrous cars. But I looked at nitrous, to me, scares me. I don't know why. I feel like they blow up and hurt a whole lot more motors than turbo guys. Wah, and, wah. Um, yeah, so I, I was like, man, I don't know if I want to keep I don't know. I've seen a lot of manifolds go through the <laughs> through the air here recently, yeah. man. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's tip tat. You know, you got to head on sensors, right? You know, that's something you touched on a while ago about having so much data. Um, I even saw where I think Scarlet Solutions, they got, they got – uh, they got sensors now that you yeah. can put underneath your car where they actually read the surface temperature mm-hmm. through your systems now. Yeah. So you don't have to get out there with Track a gun and check it no more, man. Yeah. You just have one pointing at the ground underneath your car. That's pretty you neat. got one that'll it'll read how high your car is up yeah. off the ground. You're taking sensor, off, and yeah. it'll cut it out. I mean, it's getting to be so much of a science. I mean, Forrest and I have been doing a little bit of talking, you know, on my car. So That's what's up. Yeah. But these sensors, it's, it's just changing the game versus just getting in there and holding the brake, mashing the gas, and yeah. just taking off and yeah. holding the steering wheel. It's, it's a lot different. I mean, it's, sure. it's gotten to the point now you're just you're sitting in there, you put it to the floor, you hold a button, you let go of that button, you're holding that steering wheel until you grab it. the chute. That's about it now. So, I mean, like I said that it's, it, still a, it's changed a lot from then to now. There's still, still a lot of driving in it, man. You still you got to have skills. Yeah, you I mean, can't just, you get, can't behind just get behind no, a car. No, no, I don't no. care how automatic they make no. it. It's It's – you still got to drive that thing because it's mm-hmm. it, you can't you can't op- make the track automatic. No. I mean, if you got a really good surface, that's one thing. But still, I mean, you could you seen how many cars with perfect tracks shake the tires or just slow the tires? And that's another thing when people get perfect tracks. All right, this is where they kill this FF. And I'm, I'm, I'm we're gonna make a perfect example. You know, the PB part. Mm-hmm. You can't always want to go through the track and go for a PB. When if you go to all right. You do PBs on on test days or you know uh, a rental. That's when you do the PBs. If you go to the track and you get in a shootout, all right, you don't you race the car beside you. you don't try to go and hold oh, the track's good. I'm gonna throw everything at it. That's that's the good way to lose. You want to go A to B. You want to have a, a, a decent A to B tune up in it, and also you want to beat the guy beside you. You don't want to try to take whatever the track can take because that's when you're gonna go knock the tire. You're gonna blow the tire, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? They they under they overestimate the track, and then they just, they do too much in a way. So a lot of times I tell a lot of guys, man, don't try to – I know the track feels good. Let's not try to throw so much at it. Let's just beat this man beside you so therefore you can get to the next round. Let's make a decent A to B pass. Well, we, we've had a couple of guests on, and they, they spoke about how 
their car actually went faster when they slowed it down, or they actually made it to the next round when they did slow it down. Have you had a, I've, I've, a situation like that? I, I honestly did. I actually went my PB a couple weeks ago, and um, it's not nothing fast, you know. But I actually slowed my car down. I I have a part. I have a bad problem with this car wanting to wheelie a lot. For some what? reason, I should change it to not that car. Never. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I, for some reason, I feel like everybody should know what the underneath my car looks like. I think the whole world's seen a picture you, of your car at Z Max, man. At Z Max, yes. Are that you was, gonna start selling advertisements underneath it? I thought about it. My buddy yeah. told me he said, "Man, you ought to do something funny under your car because you always show the bottom of it." Yeah, put, my oh, first put plastic solutions or something under there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my first big wheelie in that car was at Z Max at um, Street Car Takeover two. About two, three years ago, when I first built the car. So when I let's back up for a few. When I wrecked the car, the wheel came off. All right, I set the car sat back down for a few months until I redid a whole lot of stuff. I changed the turbo kit and um, some more stuff on the car. I changed it up. The next outing with the car was at Street Car Takeover in Charlotte. I went out there and that Friday night did some testing. I jumped in the small tire shootout and um, <laughs> yeah, I jumped in the small tire shootout and I ran. Um, I can't remember the guy, but it was a. It was, it's not a must. It's a. It's a fox body, but it's the one with the round back. Um, it's. It's not an actual fox body. What's the one that, with the round back? The round back glass. Ten ninety five. No, 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 no. It's. It's a fox body look front half or whatever. But yeah. anyway, it was is it like we, a Pinto or something. No, it's a no. Mustang. But it, like I say, he's got his back glass is bubble. Anyways, like a Capri. It might be something similar. Something I, like I can't Capri. remember. But anyways, I get out there and like I say, first round I had him. Boom! Let go of the button. Right on the back bumper. I'm like, oh, this is my first wheelie. This is my first wheelie ever. I went, like I said, I went from front wheel drive to this car. First wheelie ever, sat it up, and I sat it back down smooth, and I actually won a race. He, <laughs> he spun a tire, and I, I got away from him. And then um, second round, I drew meth head. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so it's like my 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 luck at street car takeover with my car. I pulled bears. I had meth head, and every, if, if you don't know him, it's a big blower car. And – when I say I couldn't hear my car, I couldn't hear. He got on his trans brake and we left. When we left, I I didn't I don't have a shift light or anything. I I listened to my car when I shifted because I still shift mine. I don't have an air shifter and stuff on it. I listened to my car when I shifted. When we left, I think I shifted to second early. I pulled it back just because I I couldn't hear. So I'm like, am I in the right gear? You know what I'm saying? Like he was off the track. And everything before I come through the finish line. I don't like you're like, man. He's, I'm gonna get a front row seat to yeah. see how fast. This yeah, he, he went. He went 180 mile per hour, and um, here I am going about 130. I'm like, yeah, he was. He was way gone. Way before he was packing that. his shoe. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> he damn, yeah, I'll come track. off the track. He, yeah, they already got the push bar to him, pushing on my own back. I'm like, what well, damn? <laughs> I uh, I've heard people complain about that with like. Uh, uh, Cletus's car's got Rocky. Yeah. Because it's a big blower car yeah. with, with zoomies out the Man, side of it. Everyone complains about that car. They're like, if you get next to it, you can't hear your you, own car. You can't. You can't. I, I mean, if you ever ran beside a zoomie car or whatever, man, it's it's crazy. Especially on a tight track. You get on a wide. And think about it, Z Max is a nice size track. I couldn't hear nothing on my car at all. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to run blower cars. No I was more. I was joking about doing that with my car last year. Um, and then David put in like he added a rule later on, which exhaust all the Dude, way to the back. And yeah. I was like, oh come on, yeah. you know, I, I had a guy who was gonna make me a set of zoomies to come out on my car just yeah. just because I could because it wasn't in the rules. And I was like, it's free power. Why you not? like to find that right. gray area, man. I love the gray area. The gray area is always there, and people. Yeah. It, hey, it's it's there to use them. You well, know? It, well, I mean, you can I'm get not, by with sure, it for I'm one sure year, you, but then then <laughs> there's a rule that comes out with your last name on it most of the time. Yeah, yeah there there is. I, I mean, every year I've run. The next year, you can basically look at it, and I'm sure you've had this happen to you, too. Well, mine's is That's, simple. Well, <laughs> yeah. Y'all guys have it a whole lot harder. Yeah, I mean. Well, because the problem is, as we've discussed on here, what is the definition of a streetcar, right? And and I appreciate that that is a hard rule set to get down, right, and go, okay, what defines a streetcar, and how do you rule out race cars from slipping into streetcar? Um, it's actually funny. I've been talking with uh, Josh Peak. I was going to tell you about this. I've been texting with him because he's adding on Thursday nights a 28th race. Right. Yeah. Uh, you I know, think $100 buy-in. Yeah, 23rd. 23rd. Uh, yep, this month. That. So I've been messaging with him. I said, hey, can we organize like a slower class, like a daily driver right. kind of class? And he's like, well, what would you want to see for rules? And basically what I shot to him as like my first addition in the rules. And you guys can give me your opinion on this. It's like. You know, rule number one, licensed and insured, you right. know, registered and insured, right. and, and actually check that, right? Because I can tell you of the all the races that I've gone to where it says that, they've never checked. Nobody. Right? Yeah. Um, 
The second one uh, was DOT rated tire. Okay. So that would, uh, uh, what is it? The Pro Radial mm -hmm. is not a DOT Correct. rated tire. Right. It's got a DOT stamp on it. Right. It is but not, it's not rated. For it's, it's not for street races. It's for drag right. race only. Yeah. It's for drag race only, right? So that that gets that tire, that tire. out, Correct. right? And gets you. But it has to. And then I also said no hard tires, right? Because yeah, you don't yeah. want to tear up the yeah, brakes. Yeah, just right. prep out. You know. Um, 15, uh, either a 20 mile cruise or a 15 minute idle in the lanes will decide right. day of, and then 3,700 pound minimum, right? If you know, and that I feel like that rule set is simple where you can allow a lot of cars in, right? You can get a good car count, but it's not so light that you're having gutted out SN95s right, and right. Fox bodies and, and all this other stuff getting in there. You know, I don't. I don't care what power adder you have. Right. I don't. I don't care, you know, whether you have carbon doors or not. Like, you know, or Lexan because, like, if you've gone to the point where you have carbon doors and Lexan and all that, you're going to weigh less than thirty seven hundred pounds. Right. So yeah, it's, as long as you beat the weight, I can understand it. But the, the whole street car, that's that's always going to be a hard topic because mm -hmm. everybody got their own opinion on the street car, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of cars that may can be driven on the street and and this and that, but. Like I know cars right now probably can sit in idle for fifteen minutes and we'll do a twenty minute cruise, but is it really a street car? Like we got our buddy Jason, <laughs> he claims Meatloaf is mm -hmm. a street car. He wanted to be a street car so bad. Is it? Yes, he'll drive to Waffle House and he. Could, but the fact and, that and Waffle the, House is his neighbor is has nothing to no, do with no, it. That's, that's a couple Man, miles. I, I, have, I haven't even seen it, but my son was telling me about Slick Rick taking a trip to the gas station this past week. <laughs> God knows, I hate for him to line up beside me at a yeah, stoplight. I mean, yeah, that would be kind of. <laughs> but like, it, it's just the whole. I mean, that's that's just a touchy subject when it comes to street cars because, I mean, it's so many. You can make a rule. You can make all the rules you want. Either somebody gonna complain about it. Either way, and and I don't I don't even want to talk about it because it's hard. I mean, it's it's so many. Like I said, so many variables that can continue mm -hmm. to be a street car. I mean, if you're really gonna do it, let's do a, a certain year up. If it, if you're gonna do street car, let's do this year up. And let it go. But I see guys talking about something right now on the street car class for 252. Nothing against Braxton, but this is just his rules. A lot of guys are talking about the heater box. You got to have a factory heater box in your car. I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> right. See, but this is my thing, right? Um, that was a big argument last year. Yeah. So, but about. my thing is, this is just me talking. Mm -hmm. What a heater box really got to do with, you know, with it being a street car. Because it, I'm racing. I don't have to have my heater on to race. You well, know what I'm saying? You're not allowed well, most to people because it's going to drop water. Right. And most know? people, that, if they've done a swap on their car, I mean, they just got that, that heater cool over there in the corner. I mean, it's not hooded up or anything. Right. And, I mean, it's not – okay, I just – I don't know. I just – that that rule there, I see it. I can understand it. I can understand why people are complaining about it. I do get it. Do I know why he might put it in? No, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I think it's. I think another reason he put it in is because it stopped the guys from doing all these swaps. That's mm -hmm. that's one reason there. I mean, because okay, let's say we do a 99 and up. All right, so that'll be that take out the SN95s, but mm -hmm. it leads for the new edges, and they give you some of your F bodies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. All right, well a lot of them guys there like me. If I do it, I could put an LS in it, LS turbo, or if it fit, as long as I can make it fit the rule, I'm not putting a heater box in there. You know, what I'm, I'm not. I don't have nothing in mind. You know what I'm saying? So. I can understand it in a way because if I put LS in there and if I kept the four sits in there and do all this and that, I have to have a lot of money, a lot of money in the motor to even run with some of the guys in a way. But if I put the LS in, I can stop by LS and turbo it, and as long as it's got the right trans in it and fit the weight requirement, I probably could run over the street car class in a way. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm -hmm. where a lot of guys are doing it. So that's why like the heater boss is a rule that came in to keep these guys with swap cars out of it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't see it being a, a a rule you should have in there. Yeah, but if you spend the money, you can have a, a good engine shop or a builder. They can put in almost any motor they want in there and still right. have all that stuff hooked exactly. up. Well, and, and but that's, I mean, it's still, it is still just a money game. Well, that's why I put that, that weight requirement there because Galat does have good scales that right. you can just run right across, right. so it's not a big deal. And I felt like the 3,700-pound one was, you know, if you got a guy with a lightweight car, there's no way he's going to go and add 500, 600 pounds to his car just to try and run you know, the daily driver class. Something you could add to that class is just they have to retain a factory-style 12-volt battery because if they keep that in there, it's going to add at least 5,000 pounds because <laughs> all them batteries, yeah. man, they are freaking heavy. They are. They are. Yeah, it's. I'm trying to – I've realized as I'm writing up a set of rules, you got to make rules that you can enforce, 
right? That you can check. I'm there's no way I'm going to make every guy pop his hood so I can put a battery tester on it and go, is this actually a 12 volt? Right. Okay, it is. Great. You know, oh, you're 14.7. Uh, maybe Right. No, right. No, I'm I'm not doing that. You know, so that that's where I'm looking at it going, okay, what's the cuz I like simple, right? Like when you really start breaking it down. Like I looked at doing PDRA um and they've got it's a book. Right. The rules for the class is a book. And now I get it. Like they've they've studied it and they've they've gone, okay, this combination at this weight should run about this. This combination at this weight should run this. So they're they're equal. I get that a hundred percent. You know, but well, I'm gonna pick on Braxton's rules a little bit, All you right. know, for his for his uh daily driver class this year, or, or true street or whatever okay. he's calling it this year. Right? If you have a coyote motor, dual power adder, and you have a trans brake, you have to weigh forty two hundred pounds. <laughs> That is a really heavy car. Yeah. Like, and that is hard. That's really hard on stuff. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, okay, well, if you don't use the trans brake, you can drop 100 pounds. Woo. You know, 4,100 pounds. That's still really heavy. And, right. like, what a lot of guys aren't thinking about, like, I understand he's, he's deciding that and going, okay, I'm trying to make it fair. Right. right. I think he said the nitrous guys can weigh as low as, like, 3,600. Like, there's a 600 pound difference in the class just based on what power adder you're using, but it it's it, it wears on the parts a lot harder the more the car weighs, right? And it's also it's a lot harder to stop a really heavy car. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, and so sure. like my car last year weighed 3740. You know, like I I totally understand. You know, with what I'm doing with the car now, it would not fit the own the rules that I'm making right. for a class. But that's fine. I'm not trying to fit this class. Right, I'm right. trying to give a class for guys to run at. Right. You know, because technically all of them fit in the 28s class, right? But they're all going to get run over. Right. By you know, like I mean, John Doc was joking about bringing black sheep out to it. You know, it's like okay, so we get a, a you know a Whipple swapped S550. And John Dock in the in black the sheet, class. you know, yeah. it's like this guy's going to run a low six, maybe a five eighty. Right. That's going to run almost a three second pass. Right, right, know? right. Yeah. And so like that's where I'm going. OK, let's give a class to these guys, you know, make it simple rules and try to get 16 cars in the class. And I think at, at that weight level and the basic rules, it gives everybody a shot at it. At right. Least. That's understandable. for you. I mean, it, the weight rule is. It's it's a killer. I mean, like you say, it's going to get your puppy kickers out of the way, and mm-hmm. you're not going to have you guys, oh, you know, 3,000 pounds, just 2,500-pound car or this mm-hmm. a street car to jump in with somebody that weighs 3,600 pounds. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a big difference in a way. But, um, I mean, it's that's why I say the street cars is just a – as a subject I don't like to get into sometimes. It's going to be a never-ending discussion because, for the rest of the life. Because, like me, like my car, I have tax insurance for that. I take. I mean, in a way, I got headlights. I got tail lights. That's everything. I mean, because yeah, you live in a county that doesn't do emissions testing. Exactly. Yes. Would he? Would he drive it to the store? Yeah, uh, I got a store he, three miles to, around yeah. the corner. Surely we. I drive right to the store. You know what I'm saying? They would know you were coming from the second you left your house. Yeah, too. and I will let it. I'll sit there and let it idle for 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just a couple more things I want to touch on, man. Because I know we've had you here for a while. Um, I've seen uh, I've seen videos going around or something of you riding on a tractor, man. So are you getting into farming or you more in, the, in prepping tracks? So, so what's going on? So man? that was another thing. Like I said, when I'm at the drag strip, I help out a lot. And Nick Kenson is one of my just say Kenson my home track. And um, Mr. Bobby, like I said, he's a good guy. And then a lot of times I help out doing from prepping the track to cleaning the track. And at that moment, I think the video that you saw, I was going down to. Um, I don't know. We was going to do something on the track that day, pick up something, get a car off the track or something. I can't remember, but uh, that's what that video there was all about. There, it come from my TikTok, so it was well, something I posted. You've been learning a lot with that. Uh, learn more about the prep that you might can actually put into your car, your program about how to do that. Well, I think he was about to go down the right lane too. He seemed to be spending a lot of time on that right lane. Well, you know, I I got lanes of my choice, <laughs> 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 but no, um, prepping man is is is. With our guys, I think the one one of the biggest thing we play about on the prepping part is uh, just I mean, well, if any any car or stuff like that, just the suspension and stuff, learning that a whole lot more, and then tire pressure, I notice plays a lot more because all our cars right now run about the same tire pressure in a way, and and it all works, you know what I'm saying? But there's some guys I we talk to, and they's like, oh, they run this amount, you know what I'm saying? They run maybe two or three pounds less than us, but then your wheel is wider, you know, so you might don't need as much, you know what I'm saying? So it's Every car and every team is a little different. Like I said, I, with my guys, we got like 
So well, my team, Slow Cars TV or whatever. So I mean, I got a big guy, like big group. So it was me, um, Buddy Tyler, um, Sean, Corey, Jason, Logan's building a no prep car right now. We got Will, we got Matt, and those are my close knit guys. So I got a lot more people, you know, what I'm saying like Justin Hill. He, for some reason, Justin, if you're watching this video. Okay, it's about that time Justin, for you to come you back out. you better be watching this yes. video. Uh, it's about that time for you to come back out. And your car, is, it was broke last year. You fixed it now. Well, you got the parts to fix it. So come on back out. Let's get to racing or whatever. But like I said, we got a lot of guys. And all our cars are basically set up just alike in a way. You know what I'm saying? Even, only one that's not set up the most, I say, was Justin Carr. It'd be Justin Hill Carr and, um, I say, the wheel truck. Um, the little um, twin turbo Love. car. Yep, Chevy Love and stuff. But those are the only two that's really not set up. But everybody else, we're all Mustangs. We all set up just a lot. And like I say, uh, Logan, he's building a no prep car right now. So we're going we gonna to stop switching from radio cars to go no prep because it's a lot. When you try to take a radio car, like Sean car, his car has been on no prep before, but it didn't do good. <laughs> but once they found out the, the keys and what really works for no prep, that's why we took it out. When we had 700 pounds in the rear of his car to try to make it go down because his car is so nose heavy. The percentages on it, that's a lot of things. Like a lot of people that go no prep, they don't look at all right, your percentages and stuff like that. And we had to put 700 pounds in the rear of his car to make it work where your car, you set your car up for no prep, you might only got 200 pounds in the rear because your percentages is more to the rear. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of that stuff plays a lot of difference when you swap in from radio to no prep and just too much. So now we're going to have a dedicated no prep car. Then that's what we're going to do. I mean, our buddy Matt, he has a no prep car, and that's all he want to do anyways. But he's getting it back down here soon to do it. But it just it's, it's a lot into that stuff, man. But uh, Well, you going to have more information about that on your YouTube channel? and Yeah, so I, like I said, I just started back making some more videos here recently, and um, shout out to everybody that's been subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, and if you're new to this, to me, and, you know, Slow Cars TV, and uh, make mm -hmm. sure if you're watching this, subscribe to him, man. Like I say, I mean, these guys hit me up, and you know, I'm, I'm glad I was able to come out here today and actually talk and share some knowledge with them, or not mm -hmm. even knowledge, listen and learn from y'all as yeah, well. Yeah, we all you know learn together, man. But, um, I mean, mine is mainly is just our guys racing. And, you know, I might do a little shop stuff here and there, but, I mean, it's just something that's I post and just trying to have fun. That's that's mm -hmm. basically it. I'm looking forward to having you back on in the in the future, man. Maybe have some more of your team members come on with you. That'd be really For cool. Sure. I, I've got a couple guys that be looking out. I got some that I know that you want, you really want up here real bad. I know oh, Tyler yeah. and his son, for some yeah, reason, so, yeah. you told me. I know y'all got a little story, a little history. So yeah, yeah. I, know, we, I, know I think we got want. a little bit of history. I've never run you, but, uh, man, thank you for coming on. Thank you for pulling me off the track that day. Yes, sir. It was uh, – you know, that was not a fun situation. No, it's never fun getting it, pulled off the track. <laughs> no, no. And, uh, you know, in the video, I, I might post the video on here. Um, you can hear, you know, Drenzo in the back going, you know, hold it, 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 hold it. Yeah. You know, and, it was, you know, I could, feel, I could feel you guys when I was in the car just, yeah. you know, hanging on for dear life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, but I kept her off the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing. <laughs> so, all right, man. Well, we're going to wrap it up there. As always, I'm Nate the Fast Plumber. I'm Ernie from 10.5 Live. And Dorenzo Brown, a.k.a. Turbo D at Slow Cars TV. Yep. Hey, don't forget to uh, sign the hood before you head out. Yes, sir. We'll All do. right. Thank you very All much. Right, appreciate, right, you, appreciate you guys that. next time. All right.